Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, I'm going to show you how to take your Raspberry Pi NES to the next level. And that starts now. In a previous video, it seems like we just kind of got the ball rolling, but my whole goal on this particular series of videos is for someone who's never dealt with a NAS or a SAN, knows you need to do something, but you really want to, don't want to go out and spend the money for a big system. And trust me, there's a lot of choices. So in order for you to get a feel for what you want, this is by, by putting your own system together, you'll have a better idea of what to expect and you won't be as, as shell-shocked potentially. And if you've done this before, you know, you're, you're an old hat at this, but if you've never gone into command line, or set up a something like Open Media Vault or FreeNAS or OpenNAS or OpenFiler. There, there's a host of options out there, but the more you know going into it, it's going to make it that much easier to go on. So this is actually, we're going to switch over to another camera. And I've done this over a period of time because at one part, it takes over 24 hours for the initial mirror to build. And we were initiating, what we did is started from a single drive in the first video. Now we're taking it up to RAID 1. RAID 1 is a fancy way of saying mirror drive. So if you write to one drive in the background, it's writing to the other drive. Where the protection for you comes in is if one drive fails, you're still up and running. You don't run the risk of losing everything you've got and having to spend thousands of dollars with a data recovery service with no guarantee you'll get anything back. Now RAID 1 isn't foolproof, but it's at least a level of protection. So let's go ahead and get started, and you'll see what it's like to do. Okay, so now we're, we've got, I'll tell you where I'm sitting at this point. I've got a the web console up, or web portal, whatever you want to call it, to Open Media Vault. And I've also got a session in Secure Shell, because it's going to take both of these to do this. You can do this, and I've walked through this several times and we'll get it done. We'll just take it one step at a time. Now, it would be easy. Now, right now, we'll click on Storage and Disks. And you'll see both SDA is the first one that I plugged in. And then SDB was the second one. So that's that's where you want to see at this point. Now, it would be nice if you went down to Rage Management and you click Create. And you selected Mirror. And we should be able to see drives there. But look at this little line on the bottom. Devices connected via USB will not be listed. Too unreliable. Well, I respectfully disagree. So I'm going to show you how to get this done. Okay, first we'll go down here to SMB. We will turn off the SMB service. Click Save. Apply. And it'll be done here in just a second. Then we will go to shares. And we will delete the share. Yes, we want to delete. Okay, now that's fine. Now we'll go up here to shared folders. And okay, we got to click that. Okay, that's fine. I thought we already clicked yes once already. Okay, so now what we'll go do is we'll delete and we'll just delete this shared folder. We don't want to delete the content. If we, if we do that one, then you're resetting it back to defaults. So we'll delete just the shared folder. So now shared folder is there. Yes, we've got to, to do that. And so now if we go back up here, we got to do one more thing. And this, no, go down here to File Systems. Now, to get this to work, you have to unmount the SDA1. See, the SDB is not mounted yet, so we're fine there. SDA1 is mounted, so we need to unmount it to get this to work. Okay, and we'll click Apply. Now, even with taking these steps, please, please make sure that you've got 
everything backed up just in case. So now we'll go over here to our secure shell link and see where it already ran the command ls space dash l space forward slash dev forward slash s asterisk and that's showing us this is just another verification that we've got two drives plugged in okay so that that's what we want to see now you saw that same thing in the web interface but this is just another way to see it now this is the command line that's going to get it to where you can have a raid system i'm not raid but well raid one or mirrored drives so we'll hit enter and see it's warning you that it doesn't like some of the things but that's just covering their their backside and we'll select i mean it's not select we'll type yes and it's starting to mirror so let's go back here and we'll see we'll go into raid now see it's got that way well, i left it as name by default so that's it's in the process now with this in this part of the video this is actually about 30 hours a little bit over after we started doing the initial recording and i had to stop because the building of the array took a little bit longer than i had thought it might now granted this is on a raspberry pi 3b plus and to mirror the two drives it took about 30 hours okay granted it's on a raspberry pi it's not on a higher end or medium end raid controller so you know, it's to be expected and it's building essentially as a software raid so now we're at a point we can start rebuilding the system so now we'll have to go uh, create the file system and i thought based on the directions that i read that we'd be able to maintain what was there which is why i said earlier on make sure you have a backup with the way it created the array it doesn't appear that's going to be the case so we'll click on create and we'll on the drop down box here we will select software raid and this is this is the two systems that, that it put uh, two drives it put together you see raid one and the md127 which yes that's the same thing that you would have seen in the raid management tab so we'll click well okay we've selected that one rather um and we'll just call this raid one we'll make it the ext4 file system and it says we're going to have to format it says all files i mean all days gonna be deleted so that's what told me that there was not a way contrary to what i saw in the documentation that it said you could take a single drive and make it raid one that obviously is not going to be the case so it's basically setting things back to default and this is where it's going to take a little bit of time so we'll come back to this once it has completed the process now we're picking back up after the file system has been through the formatting process just to save you all some time i decided to to stop uh, watching it for a while it took about 45 minutes so now what we'll go ahead and do since it is showing as online we need to go ahead and get it mounted and click apply yes it should be available now okay it does show as mounted so we will go down here to shared folders add and we'll call this one nas or actually no we'll call it sand because we just well you can call it whatever you want to and once you cannot do this step until the file system has finished formatting because it won't show up at this point so we'll go ahead and click on that and we'll give let just let the rights stay the way they are because with the way that i've been walking you through setting this up this will be you know it's just a it's going to be an open system because you'll want to write to it from any of the systems or any of your smart home devices so we'll click apply and then yes and then we will want to check on privileges at this point 
Uh, we've got the user account that we had created earlier, so we'll give it read write access and save. We should come back here with a little pop up in just a second. There we go. Didn't want to be disappointed. We'll click on apply. And yes. And now we should be up and running. So we'll, we'll go over here on my Mac. And of course, SMB on a Mac, it's going to be a little bit different. So if, if you're on a Windows system, just make sure you've got your uh, Open Media Vault system in the same work group. Or if it's in a domain, you know, you know that. So that's not a problem. So we'll click Connect. All right, it doesn't like that. Let's go take a look. All right, a little bit of quick checking pointed in the right direction. Even though I had created the shared folder, even though we had assigned the rights, we had to go down to our good old friend uh, SMB CFS, click Shares, click Add, and we will drop down here. So now we see that. And we won't set it to read only. We'll want it to be browsable. If public, then see, we wouldn't even need credentials. But just at this point, to keep uh, a device from being honest, then we'll just go ahead and, and make it to where you've got to give credentials. At least it's, you know, it's a very basic level of security. Okay, we'll click apply. Click yes. And now, let's go back, as I say, and lather, rinse, and repeat. And we'll click Connect. And there we go. So now, let's go give it the acid test here. And let me pick a directory out here. And we'll copy that one over. That's got all the books I've written for the past several years and you can see it's starting to copy and it says it's going to take about 10 minutes but you can see where where that goes and really it's I, I you know I left some mistakes in there because you know things are going to happen and in the heat of the moment you may not remember that oh I didn't do this one step so that's why I've created kind of a a video diary for you of how I've gone through the process so at this point, we've got the Raspberry Pi set up. We've gone from a single drive to RAID 1. And the big thing with RAID 1 is you're protected from a physical drive failure. And the two things that I've had caused me the most grief over the years with storage systems is either I've had a power supply go out, which does happen, but more likely because of the drives and they're being used the way they are they are they're going to fail i mean that's just the law of averages says that's going to happen so raid one is the next step up gives you a little bit of insulation a little bit of protection from a drive being a failure and there's the next video i've already got in the works we're going to turn on uh, some drive monitoring we're really going to take things up to the next step because let's face it folks we're using drives that were really not meant for nas use but for the small iot network at home for a non-commercial situation this will be fine for what you need for the most part You're keeping backups of the firmware images of the drives on your iot network keeping the other firmware such as backups of open media vault uh, all the different things that you've seen me do with videos and before i'm building an archive now of all that information. So if I have to get to it, I don't have to worry about if the internet's up or if the site that I'm trying to get to, if the firmware's still there. If I need to go back to a certain version of firmware, it's nice to know that when that's an option, I can roll it back myself instead of having to place a call to tech support and and that kind of fun thing because there is like the home assistant. I ran into a problem with that and I'm having to roll back to an earlier uh, firmware because the latest firmware, when I went up to it, one of my integrations quit working and there was no warning in advance yet it worked before so that told me there was something in the code and i'm not the only one who saw that problem 
But this is where having older versions of firmware or having the information written down, if you need to roll back to an earlier version of firmware, what you're looking at. So anyway, that's all we're going to do for, for this time. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. If you're listening to this on the podcast, come over to the YouTube video, and then you can kind of walk through the steps visually to see what's going on. But it really, as you see, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And I've dealt with some other NAS environments that were not that intuitive. But this one really is a good one to do your proof of concept to get a feel for where you're going to need to be. So if you want to go up to a full, you know, NAS system that you can either bring open, uh, I'm sorry, bring the uh, Open Media Vault with you, or at least, you know, if you want to do something else like iSCSI that's not in Open Media Vault, that you've got an idea of what you're looking for, which will make the process and make that transition that much easier. Again, thank you for everybody who's watching. Thank you to those who subscribed. If you know somebody who is thinking about doing a smart home environment, I'd really appreciate if you'd send them over to this channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the notifications icon so that you can keep up with videos as I do come out with them. And we'll all have a journey on this together. Thank you for those who have been leaving comments. I'm trying to get to everybody as best I can. And we'll see you here in a few days.